This is Viterbi Voices. Coming to you from the University of Southern California, Viterbi School of Engineering. We're here to give you the inside scoop on research, classes, student life, and so much more. All of these shared by students, faculty, alumni, and other members of the USC community. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Viterbi Voices. As usual, my name is Paul Ledesma, uh, Executive Director of under, what am I, what do I do? I am the executive director of undergraduate admission here at the Viterbi School, one of your co-hosts. And my name is Cameron. I am a senior studying computer science and business administration at the Viterbi School. And I'm your other co-host. And luckily, I do remember what my you major is. do remember is. who you are. <laughs> it has changed, but I do remember what it is. <laughs> the, you know, the problem is I was trying to like make it different so that I'm not always saying the exact same thing, but I realized there's a reason why you say the same thing. So it kind of keeps you going. Um, uh, before we get into this week's episode, um, I wanted to give a quick update, uh, for anyone who's been listening to the podcast for a while now, uh, might remember last year's, uh, host, Emily Powis. Emily was a biomedical engineer and had, was, if, if everyone remembers her journey that we talked about the entire year about what she was going to do next, she was taking a year off to do some uh, wilderness medicine, if I remember correctly, maybe do some things related to just other types of service, not just taking a year off from education before she applies into medical schools. She uh, just emailed me and wanted to let me know that uh, she has been admitted to nine medical schools this year. Wow. Uh, so she's admitted to USC Keck, Colorado, Georgetown, uh, Cincinnati, Vanderbilt, Yale, Columbia, uh, UPenn, which is the Perlman, and Harvard uh, School of Medicine. So she is got her pick of schools of where she wants to go, uh, but she just emailed me and just gave me an update on what's happening. But she's trying to decide which school she's going to go to, and I'm sure she's going to do some great stuff. She has her her literal pick of wherever she wants to go for medical school. So if you remember Emily. She's off doing great things and will be joining medical school in the fall uh, at one of these prestigious institutions. So congratulations to Emily and for everyone who had listened to her story. I, I hope you appreciate that update. Um, right. Get, nothing makes you feel insignificant when when Emily shows you how, how great she is. Right, Cameron? Yeah, it's crazy. Like, I mean, I, I shouldn't even say it's crazy because it's like very frequent, like it happens. Yeah. Um, like just, you know, people going into like doing amazing things after, you know, going to engineering school and getting into like basically every med school that people, you know, think about when they're a kid. Um, I know like someone else we knew, um, you know, and also in engineering school went to Harvard Med. And then recently someone went to Harvard Law. Biomedical yeah. engineer went to Harvard Law. Like, you know, typically yeah. you see like engineer law school, but he's in there. He got in. He did it. Yeah, Matt. Matthew, right? Matt Klaus. Yeah. And so just except like that's you know pretty exceptional because you know you're going from engineering like you pick a whole different career path going to law school and you're going to you know one of the best programs it is interesting how people talk about these these ideas of quote unquote prestigious institutions and like you know out of reach they are and most people immediately kind of go to harvard but when you said like all these people I'm like i know lots of the turby students who have gone on to harvard for harvard business school uh, i know multiple vsas that have done that Harvard Law, Harvard Med, uh, and that's just in the last couple of years. Um, I don't know, like Rhea, who also used to be uh, a, uh, a podcast co-host, biomedical engineer, uh, went to work for a couple of years and now is at the Harvard School of Business. Um, we had uh, Matt Law, uh, a couple of people that have gone to Harvard Med School. Um, it, it's just, it, it's just, I hate to say, I don't want to call it regular. Obviously, it's not regular, <laughs> but it's not unheard of and it is and it is somewhat more frequent than one might believe and that's of course at a number of institutions not just a school like the mythology i think the mythological status of harvard <laughs> um anyways that that aside what what is what's going on this week what do we got here i think we got another student organization we wanted to talk about and this is a new one right cameron yeah so this is a newer club i talked with adam and so he is the co-founder and serves as president of this new organization called shift sc so like shift s-h-i-f-t sc since we love tacking on sc at the back of every club here like you know shift sc hack sc this sc hack uh, that sc um but essentially this is more about like it's a technology club but it's not just for computer scientists and it's talking about you know, um, computer science and technology within society, its impacts on society, you know, technology ethics, those like really cool things that like you don't necessarily think about all the time, but they typically come up in conversation once you talk about a new advancement. You know, you talk about chat GPT. Oh my goodness, that's so great. 
the next question is after you think about all the things you can do with it is what are the ethics behind that? You know, yeah. How does that work? And so I think this is a really interesting thing that hasn't really been talked about that much, but it's important to be an engineering society. And Adam and some folk really had a good idea to, you know, co-found the org and talk about it. Absolutely. This is a great conversation. Ethics and engineering, uh, ethics to everything that you all do. Uh, never clear answers, but good to discuss. Let's get out of the way and hand it right over to Shift. And hello, guys. Welcome to the Main Body of the Podcast. Um, I'm very excited today to have some members of Shift SC here with us. Um, why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves to people on the podcast and tell you know your name, year, and major, and a little bit about yourself and your involvement in Shift SC. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for having us here today, Cameron. My name is Adam Novak. I am a senior at USC now. I double major in computer science and East Asian languages. Um, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, and I uh, co-founded the organization last year and served as president, and now I'm a, a senior advisor. And right here with me is Jenny. Jenny, go ahead. Hi, everyone. My name is Jenny. I am a sophomore studying computer science and business administration. I'm from Hong Kong, and this is my fourth semester in shift, and I've taken on some different roles. Last year, I was an initiative lead for the STS lab, which stands for the Science, Technology, and Society lab. And this year, I am the VP of growth or operations, which means I do basically all the recruitment things. And I'm also part of one of our initiative teams, the career fair team. Awesome. Very cool to kind of get some background about you guys. So I basically just want to hop in and start with the simple question. What is Shift SC? The name really doesn't indicate what you guys are thinking about. So just what is it in a nutshell? Yeah, Shift SC is uh, USC student org for socially responsible technology. So we are a place um, for students to come together um, to talk about um, technology's role in society to be more um, critical of sort of like what uh, issues there are there, whether it's um, um, technology, you know, creating certain unintended consequences um, on people and how those can be rectified uh, with with like a different design or, um, you know, regulation um, to everything in between. And we really focus on um bringing students together from a lot of different backgrounds. So we are a technology, you know, focused student org, but only about just about half of our student org is um, half of the half of the members in the org are from engineering backgrounds. Uh, we are, I think, like one of the most diverse student orgs uh, in terms of uh, in the, of the, the Viterbi student orgs, um, because we have students from the Roski School of Design, we have students um, from Dorn's Life studying economics, um, from all different disciplines to, you know, not just have people who are in tech thinking about how tech affects society, but bringing people from you know, all different backgrounds. And we, we not only do we create those sort of internal um, opportunities for discussion, through our weekly general meetings um, and um, events, but we also, we try to put out content, we put out um, opportunities for other students to get involved with these issues. Um, and so Jenny, maybe you can speak to some of those, uh, you know, opportunities that we create for other students. Yeah, for sure. I think you did a great job summarizing sort of the mission of SHIFT and what we do. And in terms of the initiatives we pursue, we have different initiative teams. We have an AI ethics team, speaker series team, a workshops team, health initiative team, VR initiative team, and career fair team, which I'm in, which is the best one. Uh, and we also have the communications team. So with all of these teams, we do a variety of different things. So for example, for career fair, we're trying to organize a large tech for good career fair in the fall semester. And we're also bringing companies this spring for smaller Shift Connects events, which are kind of like Trojan talks. 
Um, as for the speaker series team, they're bringing in different speakers this semester with a focus on sustainability and sustainable tech. The VR and health team are hosting their events trying to promote health and VR discussions surrounding so socially responsible technology uh, through different workshops. Uh, we just had one for VR where we got to try on the Oculus headsets, which is really cool. The workshops teams is focused on digital and social media at the moment and its well-being regarding those realms. And we're trying to be in contact with different schools, elementary and middle schools around the USC campus so we can go to them and talk to them about those issues. And the AI ethics team is focused on integrating an AI ethics curriculum into USC. And they've been able to actually go to a RIT 340 class this semester and present on those topics. So yeah, we have a lot of different cool things going on. And SHIFT is really trying to, through these initiatives, promote socially responsible technology. But as a, as a club, we're really just a community of students who care about each other and society as a whole. We're space to stretch our understanding of how technology affects people and how we can steer it for the better. And we're also a platform to build socially conscious campus culture and uh, surrounding tech. So those are sort of the things we do. Very cool, very cool. And so I actually kind of want to take a step back. So Shift is a relatively new org. Um, Adam, you founded it and you were part of like one of the founders that found it in uh, 2021, right? Fall 2021. And so I know that like I can imagine there's like maybe students out there who are looking at founding their own club, maybe because they see a gap in the offerings and you know that as many as clubs there are at USC and Viterbi, there's, you know, maybe a gap. So I, I was curious, you know, one, why did you and your co-founders want to start this club? Um, and kind of talk about some of the, you know, the trials and tribulations of doing that. And then Jenny kind of looking at, you know, why were you kind of enticed to join this new club? You know, it's a bunch of, you know, kids who got together and want to start something. Do they know what they're doing? So kind of tackle those questions from your own perspective, really. Yeah. So uh, John Ho is the um, guy who I um, started the org with. And he, him and I both wanted to start Shift SE because we felt like there was um, yeah, like a gap in um, sort of this space on campus. We cared a lot about being more critical about um, like the, uh, you know a, what our technological future will look like um, with each other and with our friends. And we made space for those conversations. But a lot of the, especially the technology orgs on campus, they're more oriented towards building and creating technology, which is super cool. Um, but they you, they don't sort of as much welcome um, the sort of like the doubts that you might have. I'm like, wait, is this technology really good for us? Like, is just being entrepreneurial, um, or what what are the you know downsides of that? Uh, disrupting you know education, disrupting industries. Like, where can that go wrong? We wanted to create a space for that, um, and we also wanted to create a space to talk about these issues where it wasn't just engineers and you got perspectives from other backgrounds. And another thing that I strongly felt was when I was a freshman at USC, it was really hard for me to join student orgs. A lot of them are really competitive and um, have limited spaces. And I thought it would be really cool to just create more opportunities for students to find a community and find belonging and um, do something uh, meaningful uh, with their time here. So, yeah, we came together in uh, the fall of 2021, and we were just a small little team back then. Jenny was also there, and uh, we, uh, yeah, have have grown since then. Um, and now each semester we host, uh, we have cohorts. So. Um, around roughly like uh, 15 to 20 new students each semester uh, will come through a cohort. And when they're the first student, when they're the first semester, they're called a, a shifty, which is like a new little like shift member in the org. And they will contribute to um, initiatives. They will each join an initiative team and contribute to that particular initiative. And then after their first you know, shifty semester, they can choose to continue um, being active in the org and continue contributing, contributing, 
or they can um, you know choose other ways to um, be involved in the student org as well. Jenny, you can you can speak to uh, the other side of it. What was it like uh, for you to to join that first semester? Yeah, for sure. So I came into USC really wanting to be a part of a community that cared about issues like this, cared about socially responsible and ethical technology, because in high school, I took a course called Pandora's box, which was an English class about humans and AI and how they're similar or how they're different. And I became really interested in these types of topics. I actually started making a curriculum for my high school that it was a philosophy class and we talk about the social impacts of technology. And so coming into college, I wanted to really meet people who wanted to pursue this as like this was just something they're interested in and I want to find a community of people who wanted to talk about these issues and also act upon them. So when I saw Adam holding a little cardboard sign that was not very well painted at Involvement Fair, I was like, oh, this, this is interesting. This club doesn't seem exactly established, but it's a very interesting topic that I really want to pursue in college. So I signed up to be part of shifts founding cohort and it's been a wild ride since yeah it's that's that's funny that you mentioned that jenny i i now I think back to that day it was just john and i like holding that cardboard sign up at the involvement fair because we were it was just us two um getting off the ground and then i remember when jenny came to um um came to interview with us that she really impressed both john and i when she talked about the curriculum that she had developed at her school exactly on um, you know, ethics and technology. And so we were, we were very impressed. And that was, uh, the rest was history. <laughs> and I think that story is hilarious because like, I can imagine like you posted up with the involvement for with a, a sign, like just for context, um, every semester, um, USC has this thing called the involvement fair and they take over um, Shrewsdale, which is the main street on campus. And every student org that's on campus literally has a table and like a, a booth basically set up and they can bring things and like are essentially trying to recruit people to your club. And so some people come out with really nice, like fancy tablecloths and like standing banners and whatnot. I've worked for a couple of clubs where we're like, like the formula team one time, like brought out the car to the e quad to show off. And then you've got, you know, the, the new startup guys, the kid, the new kid on the block shift SC, like, do you, do you like think AI and like ethics is like radical? Like you should join our club. Like I can just imagine like the AI ethics hippies, but it's, it's cool to kind of see that, you know, eat, like the topic speak spoke for itself, you know, beyond like the, you know, Hey, we're like, just listen to us and talk to us. And that's kind of how you're able to get involved, which I think is like really cool. And kind of just shows like, that's, you know, what's, what it's about at USC. Well, hundred percent. And I think that, you know, like you kind of joked about it, it, I think this kind of topic of socially responsible technology was actually a bit more of like, a, you could say like a hippie thing if you go back a number of years ago, um, even like in the fall of 2021, there's a little bit more, um, less, a little bit less mainstream. But, you know, now with the, especially with um, how like impressively powerful AI uh, is, these like open, um, easily accessible models, like, like, you know, chat GPT, it's, um, become at, you know at the forefront of a lot of people's thoughts now of like wait how do we make sure um this you know technology is going to be safe um responsible and in line with our our you know our values exactly exactly and so speaking of like talking about the values i kind of want to dive in so i noticed you guys have like a variety of initiatives um so i'm curious you know like kind of dive into like what the goal of, you know, some of these, I know there's like AI, like was a popular, there's also like, you know, healthcare, which is one that may be appealing to those like, oh, I'm interested in ethics, but I'm like a biomedical engineer or have a med background. And kind of like, what are those initially, like, what are the goals for each of those? I can speak to, well, I'll start off with the AI ethics uh, curriculum team. They are the first sort of the student led um, curriculum um, here at USC, USC on this particular topic. Um, there's another, there's a number of other universities like Stanford, um, for example, that have student taught uh, classes, the sort of like a one unit or like an add-on to a computer science class. And 
we were, we took inspiration from that and we're like, why don't we, why don't we pilot something similar, um, at USC? And so it, we try to, with the, with this AI ethics curriculum, it's, it's like a supplement to the more technical classes on the, uh, social implications and uh, potentially negative social you know, ramifications of AI. And so when students are in, um, a class that's more technical, they can get this, um, you know, context on top of that, um, that's offered through the Shift SC, uh, AI curriculum. And like Jenny said, we've now piloted that through, um, a few, um, a few classes, uh, this semester. It was actually a write, a RIT 340 class, a writing, upper, upper division writing class. And we're looking to work with some of the engineering academy classes too, um, with, the uh for the, the for freshman engineers um to keep taking that further um, another example is um digital well-being workshops and like jenny said we're looking to uh work with schools in the nearby area so like middle schools and high schools and talk with students about the uh you know the, their personal relationship with their device and technology and how they can navigate that for, you know, well-being in their lifetime. Because, you know, now, now we all spend at least a few hours on our phone each day. And if you, if you, you know, count into that, the time you spend on your laptop, I know I full clock in, I don't even know, upwards of like 12 hours of total like screen time with my phone and my laptop total. And so just thinking about, you know, how to manage notifications, how to manage um, you know, social media, how to manage if, if you know, when you wake up, do you use your phone? When you go to sleep, do you use your phone? When, how should you, um, you know, keep distance between you and technology in a healthy way? Um, just having kids think about that and being more intentional about their relationship um, can go a, a really long way, especially with research that has come out that suggests that um, you know, social media can be, um, you know, unhealthy and problematic for um, for people of all ages, and that's even related to the research that we did internally at uh, USC um, right on on this topic. So, Jenny, do you want to speak to that research you did through the SDS lab? Yeah. So last year, uh, my initiative, which was the Science, Technology, and Society Lab, we made a research index report trying to figure out how USC students interact with social media and its effects on their mental health. So we sent out surveys to about 200 students, and we received feedback on how they use social media in their day-to-day -day lives. And from that research, we found some very interesting correlations between people's school year and how much they use social media, how much stress they get from social media and what type of stress it is, it is whether it's about body image, whether it's, it's feeling like they have a lot of imposter syndrome, things like that. And it's been a great supplement to the digital well-being workshops where we talk about these issues as well. And it was really nice to present our findings at the Tech for Good Symposium last spring, which was a large event where we brought in different speakers. We had some student speakers as well talk about the different Tech for Good research and projects they've been working on. Awesome. Well, that's very cool. You're able to bring in that, that outside research component too, which I know like a lot of people may be interested in to kind of back up some of the, um, a lot of the claims that you're kind of, you know, saying should be looked at as far as like ethical, you know, uses, especially for humans are concerned. Yeah, I think Shift has a good focus of su su several initiatives focusing on um, internal development regarding social media and technology, like the digital well-being workshops, the STS lab, and we also have some more like outward and promotional initiatives, such as the career fair event, the health and VR team and speaker series initiatives, which all sort of get different people to speak about issues surrounding ethical tech in those industries. Because obviously at Shift, we want ourselves to use technology ethically, hence the digital well-being workshops, but we also want to promote uh, 
ethical technology for people outside of shift who are going to go into the industry soon and you know maybe they're the next engineers who develop the greatest ai in the world and when we want them to step out of usc to develop these technologies we want them to have the mindset that what they're developing might have negative implications to society and be able to recognize that and mitigate those consequences for sure for sure so kind of diving into a little bit of a, a logistical section of the club. So Jenny, you know, you were part of that first cohort. And so you've really got a good idea as like what the club looks like from in the or student org is like from, you know, the inside and what is this. So like, take me through, you know, what does um, your student org mean? Like, what, what does your general body meeting look like? You know, what happens at these meetings um, to kind of like show like the listeners, like, you know, what is actually happening? Because we're talking about ethics, we're talking about the initiatives, but what, what is the meat and potatoes of what happens at one of the general body meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can talk a little bit about that. So during our general meetings, which are on Monday nights, we usually start off with a couple of announcements and some kudos. So this is where the community can write anonymous messages to them, to each other, just to shout people out. Uh, so I really like that segment. It really bonds the community together. And then we go into a little bit of announcements about the diff what the different initiatives have been going on have been doing as well as some of our community events that are coming up and after that we'll have an internal presentation by one of our shift members so this would be a shift member who signs up to present on an ethical tech topic that they're super interested in and they want to share with the group so last year i presented on media censorship in china because it's a problem that's very close and dear to my heart I know Adam has talked about his uh, his app that he's built and some of the ethics behind building a dating app. We've also had people talk about uh, ethical technology being used in politics. We've talked about cochlear implants and the ethics behind that. So just a wide range of topics. And it's really great to hear from different people in shift who have the same interest in ethical technology as you, but perhaps in different types of technology. And after the presentations, we usually break out into our initiative lead, meet, uh, initiative teams to have a little meeting by ourselves. And yeah, Adam, do you want to talk about maybe how the organization is structured? For the org structure, we have um, a you know, the, the, the core of what shift is like we've talked about so far, is these initiative teams. And each and all the work that we do at Shift, um, all the, which is, which is um, you know, it's education, it's creating opportunities, um, and also creating content. Uh, it's each of that, that work is done through a particular initiative. And so each semester will have anywhere from three to, um, you know, five or six initiatives. And They'll be led by a you know initiative lead um, or several, two leads in some cases and their team of um, members and then there is a comms team within Shift which stands for communications team and they take care of more of the advertising, um, the public outreach, um, maintaining our um, online presence, and then we have the core team which takes care of the, um, you know, all those higher level management, um, logistical issues, and also, you know, works to create um, and build community within the org. And so when you apply to SHIFT, you choose which initiatives you would, or you're most interested in joining. And uh, there is also um, an opportunity for you to you know, pitch an initiative that you have interest in starting if, if you so if you feel so um, you know, inclined or excited about one particular area that you um, that is not certain presently offered um, within the org. For sure. And that's definitely good insight to know because like, you know, again, if you guys are kind of in the spirit of um, starting your own club and starting your own org, when you didn't see the gap, you know, maybe there's someone who could be listening to this right now. It's like, I actually have a really good idea. This and covered by one of the, um, the topics you guys can also find more about the topics at uh shifts like website. It's shift sc 
dot org. That's like really cool. You guys have a dot org website too. So if you want to like learn more, like read about you know all the different initiatives and some of the people involved, and it's all out there. And so I would definitely recommend like looking at it, especially if it's something that you will look at wanting to apply. Um, two, when you come to USC and just kind of listen and, you know, like read about some of the stuff they have and like the community and the mission that they have um, for ethics. So kind of take it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, 100 percent. I was just going to say that we have, um, yeah, like there's the, the website, uh, shiftsc.org. And then we have our uh, Instagram um, at shift, I think shift.sc. And then we have uh, a newsletter um, all through the, through the website. And so we really encourage, um, we'd love for you to sign up um, to those, uh, through those areas so that you can, you know, just stay in touch with all the events and whatnot, because we have, um, you know, we're just limited in how many students we can accept each semester. Um, we aren't able to take um, as many people as we would like um, who will apply. And so, you know, one really surefire way to, um, you know, to get involved um, and it is through, um, you know, st- staying up to date with the Instagram and the newsletter and um, plugged into all of the, the things that we put on for, for campus. We also have a podcast, which I'll go ahead and plug right now, called Shift T. It's S-H-I-F-T-E-A. So like shift and T combined into one word. Uh, the, the, the theme is spilling the tea on you know, ethical, socially responsible technology um, here at USC. And so we bring, you know, we'll, we, we use the Annenberg uh, studio, the podcast studio. Annenberg is the school for journalism at USC, and they have this really incredible podcast studio that anyone can use. So we are run episodes and share that out with the public. And so just this um, past week, I interviewed the um, president of um, AI safety at USC, um, another student org that's aligned sort of with Shift's mission, and another one of our Shift members, Max, he will be interviewing um, someone who is one of the, a USC student who's CEO of a um, a crypto company, and talking about um, what are the ethics and um, social issues behind um, crypto, and that is such a great, another great way to get plugged in. So Shift T, it's on Spotify, it's on Apple, Apple Podcasts. Check it out. It's funny. I usually find myself being the one to plug the Viturri Voices podcast in person, but totally cool. Yeah, definitely check out the material. Definitely, you know, if it's something you really want to dive into, um, definitely check out all the, the Shift material because it's just cool to get insight to and you can gain inspiration at the very least if you like or maybe like, oh, I'm actually not necessarily sure like if shifts for me and whatnot, or I don't want to think too, you don't have to think too seriously about it. You don't have to like try to show interest to, you know, like now in order to get in or anything. It's just, you know, very casual understanding what they do and saying like, hey, there's something I can see myself being involved in um, if and hopefully when I come to USC and like pursue my engineering degree. And so kind of, I want to kind of take a step out and get you know a little more personal with you guys. So I, I wanted to know for each of you, you know, why did you think that ethics was an important thing to, you know, spend some time on, join an organization and kind of like talk about why, what was that initial spark that made you realize like engineering ethics isn't a very important topic near and dear to you? Good question. Uh, for me, I think it was a big part of it was, there's two things. Number one was um, was watching the social dilemma. Actually, uh, it's a documentary put created was created by the um, Center for Humane Technology and Tristan Harris's team. Uh, I think it released like what is it like two years ago now, a little bit over two years ago, and it documented um, a lot of the um, you know, negative social issues that social media has brought about. Um, and that later was, you know, sort of shown more through things like the Facebook files published by the Wall Street Journal um, through Francis Haugen's, uh, you know, testimonial. And watching that documentary, um, I guess, related, just re- deeply resonated with my own personal experience um, with people in um, my family, people, so my friends, where um, devices or personal devices just really seemed um to sort of like influence 
um, in often in a negative way, our, our relationships. And so I was really curious as to like, as someone who, um, that's that exact same semester, right, was building apps in a CSCI computer science 201. Now, I, I, that whole day I spent like coding an, an app. That evening I watched a documentary about like how these apps are, you know, in some ways breaking apart our relationships. And it just really um, left a weird feeling in me. And I really wanted to talk with people about that about that documentary immediately after watching it but i was like i don't even know what people would like be interested in talking about this and, and critiquing technology in this kind of way and that's when i knew um, that i i wanted to get more involved in this issue and then the second thing was that the summer after that i i spent um, not in doing an internship but i spent living at a buddhist monastery in delaware and living at the monastery was a very different way of life, uh, understandably, than we might normally live. Uh, very much like slow, ascetic, um, intentional, mindful, peaceful, sort of meditating for a lot of it each day and uh, living in silence and thinking a lot about how to be like a good person in the world. And a lot of that sort of like um, different way of living you know, living without um, a lot of like as much like higher tech and and um, going back to the basics and just being you know, a lot a lot of the that this is meditation and that sort of those practices are to just be um, content with how things are as they are and not be craving for more and that's sort of matched up with it sort of like matches up with the with the perspective of on a on a larger scale of is is this like this you know hyper fixation on um, you know economic growth and uh, better technology and innovation? Is it always a good thing, or, or whenever times where we should slow down and reflect more and make sure that what we're doing is truly um, in, a, in in the best interest? So yeah, those those two for me it was the the social social dilemma documentary. And it was living at a Buddhist monastery that really influenced me to care about these issues. Jenny, how about you? For me, I would say it started when I was younger, when I was in elementary and middle school. Uh, during that time, my family sort of lived between Hong Kong and China. We crossed the border every week. So I'd go to school in Hong Kong. And then on the weekends, I traveled to Shenzhen, China, which is the city right next to Hong Kong. And while I was doing that, when I traveled to China, I would lose all access to Western media. I can't use Google, YouTube, Instagram, nothing like that. And it was losing a lot of Western content, but also blocking myself off from the Western way of thinking of life. And it was, to me, it was insane how like such a, just one policy in the Chinese government can change the way people think because they don't have certain information. And that really shown through during the 2017, I forgot the exact year, but the Hong Kong umbrella protests where I saw my friends from Hong Kong and China have different ideas about the policies and the politics of the country because of the way their media presented that information. So it was just really clear how social media has an impact on how people think and how we should be very careful with how we approach social media. So that's where it started for me. And as I mentioned before, in high school, I was fortunate enough to be enrolled in this English class where we discussed how humans and technology might be very similar. Uh, and there we raised a lot of philosophical questions about what it means to be human versus and very very intelligent ai or android and so that really got me interested in these topics and i think that was also a large a time of very exponential technological growth so i just became very aware that these issues would become extremely relevant in the next couple of years and i want to be a part of the people who formulate how these discussions went and how we think about technology. 
For sure. I, I feel like those are definitely really like good personal reasons just for like wanting to be involved. Um, since there like are a lot of like buzzwords out there about, you know, AI ethics, you know, uh, control, like take over the world, you know, how do we like save ourselves, you know, mindfulness, like, you know, you, you can just run down the list of all these like <laughs> social media posts of just about, you know, how we need to, you know, be mindful about the tech that's coming for us, you know, and the, the future with AI and the present with social media. Um, but actually just having like experience, like, some of those things close and personal and like seeing and just kind of experiencing life with and without different things can certainly kind of give you a different perspective. Speaking of buzzwords and different things like that, of course, there's a variety of hot topics going on right now. Um, I feel like AI like is the is like the main thing. And I know you guys have more initiatives beyond AI, but like, of course, there's like deep fakes, like chat GPT. Like I remember the lens AI where you could like um, open AI where you could you know, generate images. Um, there's the new, like the new Bing. I don't know. That's like a pretty bad name for it, but like with AI, like th there's so many things like, you know, are you guys like, you know, interested in like any of these topics? Or are you guys like talking about them in like some of the initiative meetings, you know, but do you guys have any thoughts about these things or is it just kind of like, a, we don't deal with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we definitely talked about these issues. And I think the funny thing is about a month or two before ChatGPT came out with its newest model, we actually had a conversation in one of our general meetings where our AI ethics initiative team were presenting their modules and they were talking about AI's usage in uh, education and art. So they talked about how in the future AI might be able to generate code, how it might be able to write essays for students, things like that, and how AI was also really good at doing drawings and how this AI generated art won a drawing competition. And at the time, we're all mind blown. We were like, oh my gosh, this is AI can do all of these things. Are students actually going to use AI to write their essays, to write their code? And then two months later, uh, ChatGPT comes out and we're like, wow, this, this is actually happening. And it's happening a lot faster than we thought it would. So, yes, these are definitely issues we've discussed. And we hope to discuss even more. Adam, any any thoughts about any of the the buzzwords? Uh, I feel like Jenny kind of got got most of the like the really the the, the smoking gun of like we were on to Chat GPT like a solid two months beforehand. So I don't know if you can follow that up, man. Yeah, I mean, um, it's it's just really interesting to be living um, in this moment right now because. Um, I, I feel like we'll look back and I mean, not just we like 10 years from now, but like, you know, I don't know, centuries from now. And we'll, we'll might look at this moment as like the sort of uh, revolution, the like AI revolution, the, you know, intelligence revolution. I don't know what exactly it'll, it'll be called in the long run. Um, but it, it, you can, you could even if you can say that it's more, uh, you know, impactful than the internet revolution was um, a few decades ago. And so I, you know, there's still a lot of questions that are out there um, that are sort of unresolved is like, for example, like whether AI, um, like how should we be democratizing AI? Should we be democratizing it more so, so that everyone can have um, access to the model and fine tune it as they please? Um, or is that too dangerous to give everyone that power? And should we be holding it back in the hands of a trusted few um, who can make sure that, um, you know, average people can't do bad things with it? For example, like Russians can't get it and uh, use it to just create uh, endless misinformation in um, American you know, social medias. So issues like that are are like what are, what is being discussed right now and we are at a really important time where we uh can shape this technology that's like coming out as we speak and so i think because of that uh you know having serious conversations about the um you know the, the possible side effects the uh human, human values and what those are and how we instill them into the models um, what governance uh, looks like around um, AI, all of that is super important right now. And you know, that's exactly what um, Shift SC is trying to do here at USC. So it's just a really, um, it's, we're, I'm, we're really, I think, happy um, to have the student org 
uh, here at USC at a time like this. And I think it's so important to recognize that there's a lot of other student orgs talking about these topics. Like there's business student orgs talking about it. Um, Case Plus Plus, which is our center for AI in society organization. And I've been to a couple of actually like career advising workshops where they've taught you how to utilize chat GPT even to write your resume or to write a cover letter. So there's a lot of conversation about how you can utilize and benefit from chat GPT and also so from the business side, why they're getting so much investment. What does this mean for different companies growth, things like that. But at the same time, it's I think it's great that Shift is a voice on campus that talks about the ethical side of these issues and new technologies. Absolutely. Yeah. I think the more voices in the conversation, the better. There's certainly going to be other students who are interested and involved with this because it does reach beyond just the engineers who build it, uh, the people who use it, the people who like maybe impacted by it too. So it's good that you know, Shift SE serves as one of the voices uh, in the sea of, you know, a variety of them to kind of give it a perspective of it. So before we head out of here, I, I want to talk about just kind of a little bit of the stuff related to the community of Shift SE. I see it's like one of your four principles. Um, I did do a little bit of research on the club before bringing you guys here, but I, I was curious, you know, and I, I guess like uh, Jenny, you'll probably be the better one to start off with this um, since you kind of started um, when you first came to USC, but just how have you found community through Shift? Shift has honestly been a big part of my USC career because of its community. It has allowed me to branch out and talk to a lot of people not in my major, not in my schools because of how interdisciplinary we are. And I also really appreciate the many community bonding socials we have that promote that sense of family in Shift. Adam, do you want to talk about some of those activities? For recruitment cycles uh, at the beginning of each semester, we do we try to be more like intentional about getting to know um, people who um, apply. So we do um, these mixers, and uh, I always have really enjoyed those just to like talk with everyone on a more personal level. Um, early on, we um, have a fun first night out uh, with like boba or ice cream. Uh, the very first night when everyone meets each other, we do a little. Uh, uh, well, not a little, a like big retreat once each semester where we go uh, somewhere off off campus and we like go on hikes and uh, like have good meals together. Uh, we're actually next week we're doing a really fun um, fundraiser, uh, sort of in or the, sorry the week after spring break we're doing a fun fundraiser in you know, in in the line with Pi Day where we. Uh, are having um, shift members like stand out in front of USC with a pie in their hand and anyone can walk by and you can um, pie them in the face uh, for a few bucks. And so it's a fun way just to like bring people out um, and uh, hang out together, but also um, raise some money too. We do lunch buddies. So every week people um, will get paired, two shift members will get paired with each other randomly and you can go meet someone and um, you get to know others in the org that way on a more personal level maybe you like you know, relate on certain interests uh, just yesterday I had this funny I had a, I had a you know, lunch buddies with two um, with will and um, and zoom in the morning so we got breakfast at 10 a.m together in the village and then that same night I saw uh, Federico and zoom again in the dining hall. Uh, and they're both also in shift. And so I just walked up and we grabbed dinner together too. So it's, I think that's a really cool part is just to have people um, in that are, you know, even if you're not some of the people in the org, you get closer with and some of those people in the org, you, you don't have the opportunity to get as close with, but no matter what, you have that affiliation with each other and you can always just you know, jump in um, and say hi at the dining hall <laughs> if you bump into each other. Yeah, I'd say out of all the student clubs I've been a part of at USC, Shift has, Shift's community definitely stands out to me just because of how warm and friendly everyone is, how passionate everyone is about ethical tech, but also how diverse our interests are in this field. And I've honestly been able to make some of my best friends at USC through Shift. I can't think of a better way to end it off. Um, talking about the community, just that welcoming atmosphere and just the way to find that sense of belonging at USC. and. 
you know, in an org where the topic is so important and you guys are really pursuing and discussing and pushing issues that you're passionate about. Um, so I can, like I said, I can think of a better way ended. Thank you both so much for taking the time just to talk about Shift SC. I think this is one of the, you know, cooler clubs at USC. It's interdisciplinary. It has really cool initiatives and it's talking about real world things that impact us. Um, and so thank you guys for being a part of it, pushing the headway, um, both as like founding and that initial, that initialized cohort. Um, and yeah, just being awesome and doing what you do to kind of produce that, uh, that community at USC. So thank you guys so much. And welcome back guys. Thanks so much for listening to me, Adam talk. I think we definitely hit some really good points about all the buzzwords that you hear about and all the different things and may have been a bit dystopian hearing about some of the topics and everything, but that's the goal to have the conversations now so we can make sure that we don't get there and do things the right way and do things properly. Do you, uh, do you ever remember thinking about these things prior to college? I mean, with the level of depth that we, we kind of just discussed, is this something that you think is more recent as far as our times go, or is it something that you just start to think about the more you get involved in the education? I think it's a combination of both. So like I watched Black Mirror, if anyone's ever watched Black Mirror out there, mm. I know a lot of people do. I even write, wrote it on my application and people think Black Mirror is really cool. The underlying story about Black Mirror is that the, it's a concept of what happens when technologists and scientists and engineers don't only question what can they do and not what should they do. And so that's what kind of mm. is the genesis for the show from a technological standpoint. But it was always kind of a, oh, a haha, of course you shouldn't do that. You know, very obvious things yeah. that you shouldn't yeah. do. But you know, coming to college and, you know, the conversation with Adam just in general, because you realize that, oh, wait, I can actually create the things that I see in Black Mirror. Yeah. Crap. I probably need to think about it a bit more. So you always think about like, oh, you, you're going to do this, but the conversation doesn't get as serious until you start realize that, you know, I hate to put it like this, but you are the hand of creation. You are the person who's going to, you know, make this and make that yeah. start, you know, by being an engineer and you need to think about it a lot more thoroughly. Have you thought about how you the pressure of that type of decision or discussion will come into play when you're in industry i haven't thought about it but i think that the there is a there's a good amount of pressure but i don't personally think about it too much um i think that like i kind of have a a good standing of you know what at least like i would think from your moral compass but the issue is that like you know morals are so subjective you know what people think you should do is subjective and so i I kind of take comfort in the fact that even though i don't know the answer right away I feel like, you know, crowdsourced information, talking to people, kind of listening and making educated and informed decisions based on what, you know, you've heard from the populace is probably the most important thing. And so I feel that even though I don't know the best answer all the time, I'm not an ethicist, I'm not a philosopher, um, all the engineering has had some philosophical aspects of it, low key. Um, I can always, you know, reach out and, you know, uh, find other people who have more knowledge in that, in that area and like have thought about this more deeply in order to actually, you know, win an industry, make those, like help us make those better decisions. Yeah, good. I mean, the only thing I would encourage you to think about is that um, I think a lot of people assume that there is pressure from higher ups to go against the ethical standards because maybe it's assumed that an ethical standard or an ethical question um, is against the bottom line in some regard. But I I think the one thing I would tell you as you go through this is it, it doesn't don't go in with it with a right wrong perspective and i know that's not what you're thinking at all but go into it with a questioning perspective is this the right thing to do and oftentimes i think you'll find um at least in my experience that when a question is asked um a a supervisor a senior you know executive tends to just do things because that's the way they always did it and there was some sort of assumption back in the day that this was the best way and then you know, even in what we do in admission and college and working with students, I mean, you know, we've talked about this a lot, which is just because we did that doesn't mean that we should continue to keep doing this. Like maybe there's a better way. Maybe there's a new idea. Maybe there's something that's more interesting. Maybe there's something that is equally efficient, but has a better impact. And maybe there's something that's just slightly less efficient that has a much bigger impact. And and to ask that question, uh, I think is, is the main part of the 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 duty of your generation is to basically question not accuse not say hey you're wrong but it's like hey have we thought about this is there something wrong with something different that we can do here is this the right way uh and i oftentimes i think people think well yeah that's that's a neat idea let's let's explore it let's let's learn about that and as you mentioned everything's going to be subjective and it's up for discussion so basically that's my point of keeping the discussion going being a vocal um 
uh, catalyst to that to that discussion. It's a good point. So. Yeah, and I feel like that's even kind of part of like what it is to be an engineer and like what mm-hmm. not you. There's like a process, and this is what they've done before on you know the old model generation of designing a you know a seven seventy seven Boeing plane. If you want to make a seven eighty seven, you have to question, say, well, was this the best way to do this? Could we do mm-hmm. things better? You're designing AI models and whatnot. You know, can we do it better? And yeah, I feel like it's this exact same sentiment. So you don't you get a little bit of it in school and you get to apply it kind of in a different realm, but it's all the same concept of just pushing forth to see, I know this was a decision was made, but you know, can we, is there anything else we can, any room for improvement, anything else we can do to kind of make it more yeah. optimal? So yeah, it's all the these same e- skill. These ethics discussions do not lie in contrast to questions about innovation. And I think that they're actually one and the same. And I think that the more people view that that way, it's going to be important. All right. Well, that's a lot of deep ethics conversation for today. Uh, let's get out of your ears and get you back to what you're doing for the rest of the day. And we'll be back uh, next week with a whole new episode of Viterbi Voices and one coming up real soon related to admission decisions as we're wrapping up our final time here of uh, making first year admission decisions for the incoming class of fall 23. Spoiler alert, this is likely going to be the most selective class in the history of the engineering school and the history of the university. I know I've said that before, but this is actually even breaking new records uh, that we've ever broken before. So more on that next time. Talk to you soon. Bye.